can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. We have several inspiring stories to share today. One is about an organization that supports the 128th Air Refueling Wing. We're going to get to that story in just a bit, but first, I want to tell you about a group that makes sure homeless veterans are cared for, from finding a home to putting a meal on the table. This group is truly helping our heroes. <laughs> Watching 53-year-old John Gruby and a service dog, it's hard to believe he's battled chronic homelessness. She lights up my world. John and his beloved pet live at one of the tiny homes at the James A. Peterson Veteran Village in Racine. This last time I spent four years living under a tarp, uh, behind buildings and parks, wherever I could find. I've spent eight years on the streets under a tarp and six years in a, in a vehicle. Gruby says the shelters simply were not for him. I had street outreach teams literally with tears in their eyes begging me to let them take me to a shelter. Four feet of snow on the ground, negative 24 degrees in the forecast, and I stayed out under a tarp instead. This Army veteran is learning to deal with the past trauma of child abuse. I really have no contact with my family. I had exhausted all friends and resources, so, and I've always just done things on my own. Reaching out to the former military men and women like John is an important mission for the staff at the Veterans Outreach of Wisconsin. Jeff Gustin founded the tiny homes. He began by collecting food and furniture in 2013. You wanted the veterans to feel like they're walking into Stein homes. It's hard enough to ask for help, so we wanted to make it the best experience that we could because actually we were helping them, but they were helping us at the same time. It's a dignity thing. It's hard enough to ask for help. But we didn't want it to be, you know, a bad experience when they did finally walk through the door. Gustin is humble about what he's accomplished. This has nothing to do with me. Um, I, just about anybody can sit in my office and make this happen. Um, I'm just glad that we have enough people in a community that's so supportive so that we can be successful and help the men and women that we do. Because I value my freedoms. Um, I wouldn't have them if it wasn't for our veterans and our active duty military right now. The men and women that come through our doors, we're here to give them a second chance and a hand up and to do that and put a smile on their face and know when they walk away that they're not gonna be hungry today, to know when they move out of our village that they're gonna be good, they're not gonna be living on the streets anymore. You know, that's, that's why we all do this. You know, like when I said like-minded people, um, everybody that's come together to make this happen has the same vision and the same goal. The Veteran Village and Tiny Homes have bipartisan support. Racine County Executive John Delagrave. We've seen um, individuals and groups from both sides wanting to take a tour, wanting to learn about just how did you pull this off, wanting to know about just the success and the services they offer here because both sides of the aisle, conservative, liberal, progressive, Democrat, Republican, understand wholeheartedly the sacrifices that these individuals, men and women have made. So I think it's easy to get on board um, knowing that our freedom is because of those individuals. Delagrave notes veterans outreach also benefits the community. Selfishly, from the county standpoint, we're really only as strong as our nonprofit and faith-based entities. So when we have this organization, Tiny Homes and Veteran Outreach, taking some of these services that the county would have to, our capacity is only stretched thin. So selfishly, the better Veterans Outreach and Tiny Homes does, the better the county does. Fiona Murphy is Director of Development. I'm proud of the Racine community because we were really the first in the nation to present this idea about housing our veterans through tiny houses. Everything you see from the over 400 veterans a week that we feed in our veterans market to the 15 tiny homes and all the wraparound services, those are all things that the community supports. We built it and we keep it going, and I'm very proud of that. And those here say this would not be possible without the community's passion for the cause. The Veteran Village gets no federal funds. It's really heartwarming to know that anybody and everybody cares about these individuals. So seeing that through what's going on in our society is, is really heartwarming, and it tells, tells me that no matter what's going on, 
people do care and, and I think that's the important message for everybody out there. People really saw the need, they wanted to help the people who served us and they showed up and did it, they built a village. John Gruby, he's a reminder that even if we never enlisted, we all have a duty to look out for those who took the oath to serve. I'm learning uh, coping skills here, uh, like I said, get my life together, you know, financially and uh, you know, looking forward to, to being independent again. I look forward to when I'm on my feet again to uh, get training as peer-to-peer -peer counseling and help other homeless people, other veterans, you know, deal with their issues too. How instrumental has this been for your life and quality of life, John? I uh, can't begin to say. I fell through all the programs in the city of Racine and Racine County, so I would still be on the streets right now if it wasn't for Veterans Outreach of Wisconsin. And John is on his way. We're so happy to see that. A tiny homes community for veterans is also planned for the city of Milwaukee, so stay tuned. Now a story about the 128th Air Refueling Wing. Their base is right by Mitchell International. It supports the community in more ways than one, but one organization has made it its mission to support them. I guess what we want to present to your firefighters and first responders. The 128th Community Council's goal is to show how valuable the 128th Air Refueling Wing is to the community. I'm going to take a bit of turn if oh, I may. Very, yeah, very well. Through partnerships and lunches like these, more than 70 volunteer members of the Community Council provide much more than a full belly. It's awesome that we have people outside of the unit that have like really maybe retirees or people that really have like no obligation to us at the volunteering and wanting to help us and support us and I think that's really awesome. At this particular lunch, the Air Men and Women got a special visit from Wisconsin's Adjutant General, Major General Paul Knapp. Find something good. Good to spend time with my niece, my family, my friends. A positive line of questioning for a group of military members who support not only the base, but also serve as first responders to the surrounding communities. We're here and we're, we're, we're here to support whatever mission that comes down through the state of Wisconsin. And the 128th Community Council is there to provide a small thank you to these men and women who do so much with little to no recognition. We always appreciate you guys coming on our base and um, supporting us and oh, just making sure that you know that you're here to support us and are always so kind whenever you come in. It's really nice to have that kind of strong support and uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated. And it's wonderful to see the 128th Community Council is always looking for volunteers. If you're interested to find out how to support the council and the 128th, visit 128thcommunitycouncil.com. We put that link on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. And while our crew was on base, they got to see the brand new fire department. Now, they've only been in it for two weeks. You could actually still smell the new paint. A lot of artwork still needs to be hung, but there are rooms for each firefighter a lunch area with a full kitchen and big rigs that could put out fires on everything from a fuel tanker to a home. But that's what's pretty neat on the military installation. You know, we have dual roles, aircraft fire protection and also structural protection. And uh, we're able to utilize both kinds of vehicles for, for those. But it's much more of a specialty because, you know, all our firefighters have to be certified to drive all different kind of apparatus except just one common engine or truck. The fire department not only puts out fires on the base, but can help in surrounding communities like Cudahy, St. Francis, as well as Oak Creek. Coming up, a cookbook honoring Native American culture, plus how a skunk helped a Milwaukee County bus driver earn a huge reward. Welcome back. Travel to Milwaukee's Harbor District and you're going to see one of the city's newest murals. Adriana Mendez talked to the artist as he was hard at work. Artist Justin Suarez has painted murals all throughout the U.S. focusing on the importance of nature. This is his first mural here in Milwaukee and he hopes it brings joy to locals and gives them another reason to get out and explore their city. It takes patience and skill to turn a wall on a large building into a detailed piece of artwork. All part of the process. This is a talent Justin Suarez has worked hard to perfect. Well, I started spray painting on things that didn't belong to me when I was 17. And over many years, that journey has led me to do a lot of large scale public art. The Rochester, New York native has been painting large scale murals throughout the U.S. for more than 18 years. During these times, it's one thing that 
For relatively low cost, it makes a big impact for people. Today, he is transforming this building wall into a nature-themed oasis, highlighting animals that are returning to the river since efforts have been made to improve the overall health of the water. It's something worth celebrating that all these animals are coming back to the river now. Justin worked with scientists over at the UWM Great Lakes Water Institute. To choose which specific animals to paint, the mural will include an otter, beaver, and a belted kingfisher. That is diving into the river and snatching up a black striped minnow. Justin says he enjoys the juxtaposition of painting nature in the middle of a city. The idea is to kind of remind us of the fact that we are still connected to nature, even though this is a city. And he hopes as people pass by, they stop and think about the importance of these animals. I hope that people reflect on all the efforts that have been made to clean up Lake Michigan, as well as the river here. The ecology and the animals that live here are a really important part of the ecosystem, more important than we are in a lot of ways. I don't know how they do that. The mural is located just south of downtown Milwaukee on South Water Street. A Milwaukee County Transit System bus driver went the extra mile for a skunk, and that gives us all a reason to smile. Bob Irvin drove past a skunk whose head was stuck in a yogurt cup. Now, he saw the animal twice. The first time, he didn't have anything with him to remove the cup, so he stopped at a store, purchased one of those grabber tools. The second time he saw the animal, he pulled over and got the cup off the skunk. Bob's kindness earned him a Compassionate Action Award from PETA. Way to go, Bob. And no, Bob was not sprayed. That's even better. The Zoological Society of Milwaukee wants local kids to show off their creative side. So it's hosting a green art contest where kids can create animal-themed pieces while they learn about nature. The catch? Kids must use recycled items. For a list of the rules and deadlines, go to the Zoological Society website. Hundreds of Milwaukee area kids are ready to go back to school, all thanks to a backpack giveaway. Outreach Community Health Centers on Capitol Drive handed out the school supplies. The health center offers free coronavirus testing. We have all that information on the center's website. Milwaukee neighborhoods are getting a $2 million boost from Northwestern Mutual's foundation. That money will fund programs to promote safe neighborhoods for kids and families all through education. And finally, another reason to smile, a big thank you to a young man in Germantown. Sawyer raised more than $3,600 through his lemonade stands. That money will go to support childhood cancer research, and he did this on his eighth birthday. So thank you, Sawyer, for being a child with compassion and a big heart. I think you're going to be, be very popular and go on to do great things in life. A Brookfield man wants to raise awareness about Native American culture. As digital reporter James Groh learned, he's doing so through food. A Native American college student from Brookfield has created a cookbook to highlight indigenous culture in the Midwest. In just a few moments, I'm going to show you one of those recipes. But first, here's why it's significant. I really wanted to like make something new that was a native voice and something that was reclaiming our heritage and our lost knowledge. Derek Nichols comes from the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior, Chippewa, and identifies as Anishinaabe, an indigenous group from the Midwest. He titled his cookbook, Eating with the Seasons, Anishinaabe, Great Lakes Region, and it was released just this summer. Oh, it came together pretty organically. I have a strong interest in food and food sovereignty, which is the ideology of able to provide people healthy and culturally appropriate food. Derek wanted to give people like him the opportunity to cook foods that connected them with their past and give non-Indigenous people a glimpse into Anishinaabe culture. There are 24 different recipes ranging from squash soup to what I'm about to try, the purple pollinator, which is a berry filled snack. It's got blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, some lemon, basil, mint. Whoa. That's really good. But this is more than just a cookbook. It's also keeping the Anishinaabe language alive. So it's, it's now time for my generation to take up those reins and to recover those, those lost uh, strains of our history. 
Wow, wow, it looks very good. Well, you can either download a free version of the cookbook or buy a paperback copy. All that info is on our website. We are accepting nominations for our Positively Milwaukee Awards again. Up next, we're gonna highlight one of our Legacy Award winners with a look back at the life and times of international soccer star, Jimmy Banks. Welcome back. Can you believe it? We are now accepting nominations for the fourth annual Positively Milwaukee Awards. We really want to honor everyday people who are making big differences in people's lives. Perhaps they left behind a legacy of kindness and generosity. And that is the case with Jimmy Banks. He won our Legacy Award last year. Here's his story. Jimmy has been referred to as the Jackie Robinson of, of American soccer. He was an even better man than he was a soccer player, and he was a superb soccer player. There'd be little moments during practice where he would demo something, you know, and the guys would be like, whoa, did he just do that? He never really talked about himself and what he did. If he saw the camera in here, he would walk around. I think he's possibly better known internationally than he is known locally. He never talked about himself. I think that's why we didn't know how big his story was. He was an All-American in high school. He was an All-American in college. He was a professional for the Milwaukee Wave, All-Pro. He played in the World Cup. There aren't many people who could say that they did that. A kid from Westline, from Milwaukee, made it all the way there. When I first found out that he ended up playing in the World Cup and on the World Cup team, I didn't find out from him. I actually found out from someone else, just out of nowhere, just like, oh yeah, your dad played in the World Cup's life. What? That's how much he didn't talk about it. Often the question is asked of coaches, you know, you, you got tryouts, you got selection process and all that. Well, why did you pick him? What was the determining factor, right? And for Jimmy, it was right on the money. Jimmy made everybody around him better. Being able to see like a person that's like, you know, your skin color comes from your type of background, grow up to go to that kind of stage and like play at a pro level like that, that's, that's just amazing. We have football, we have basketball, we have other great sports, but if soccer had gotten that kind of publicity at that time, everybody would know who Jimmy Banks is. We would know him as well as we know Brett Favre. But the big thing was too, is to come back and give to his community. It wasn't just about soccer with him. He was an angel that that we needed in our lives at that time. He helped out a lot of people that came from nothing, and they grew up in there, responsible adults. He was the coaching director, he was the father, he was the mentor. Once I reached the, the professional level, I, then I had the opportunity to, to uh, make a mark, and that's, that's one way I, that I look at it, uh, because soccer been so, has been so good to me, I just wanted to put something back into the sport. Uh, as far as uh, working with inner city kids, disadvantaged kids, and things like that. He just did so much for people that it's kind of hard to like even imagine that he's gone still to this day. He says to Rob, well, I've got cancer again. And, and Rob, who had been his assistant for five, six years or some, something of that nature, he says, what do you mean again? He says, well, this is my third time. I'm, I'm gonna win this one too. Growing up seeing my dad always like strong, always doing stuff on his own, suddenly he's just laying there in the bed and this could possibly be his final days. He made an impact on a lot of people, man, from all walks of life. Everything's gonna be okay, those are his words. He kept fighting the entire time. It was, it was amazing. I missed that smile on his face when he seen his grandchild be born. He told me that was the happiest thing that ever happened to him. There's not so many Jimmy Bankses out there. There are many, many men today who will tell you that Jimmy changed their life. I think that's a big part of his legacy and we definitely wanna try and continue that on with the Jimmy Banks Academy. We wanna introduce soccer to more kids in the inner city but with the curriculum added to it, where we're teaching life skills. If me and a, a lot of my friends or a lot of people in the community didn't have soccer, we wouldn't be where we are right now. 
That was Jimmy. Uh, he's just fantastic. Jimmy's a great person. One of the best people I've ever met. I put Jimmy in the class of his own, right? Because of what he did for a bunch of young men that didn't have anything. Jimmy was genuine, and he was genuinely nice. I would say he was the best. It's a lot to live up to, but for good reasons. That's the type of legacy that we need to carry on when it comes to Jimmy Banks. So many powerful moments, and Jimmy's sons actually accepted the award on his behalf, and it was very emotional. We were all crying at the dinner. They were so grateful for the honor given to their father, and as you can see, well-deserved. And we want to do the same for someone special that you know. We have seven awards to choose from, including teacher, youth, senior, health care, and unsung hero. They could win up to $5,000 for the charity of their choice. Nominate them now at tmj4.com slash awards. I'll be right back with my quote of the week. Each week at the end of the show, I like to leave you with an inspirational message. And today's comes from civil rights pioneer Rosa Parks. Her words, quote, knowing what must be done does away with fear. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. Stay safe and stay positively no more.